नमस्कार वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन कोर्स करंट रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर कंडक्टिंग क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स इन इंडिया फॉर आई एम डी इन्वेस्टिगेशनल न्यू ड्रग एंड न्यू ड्रग आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द जॉय ऑफ लर्निंग दिस कोर्स इज अ न्यू कोर्स वी हैव नेम्ड इट एज वर्जन टू बिकॉज द फर्स्ट ऑनलाइन कोर्स विच इज करंट रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर कंडक्टिंग क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स इन इंडिया वॉज लॉन्च इन अर्ली टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन Around 1047, 1047 people have registered for this course, and around 222 participants have taken exams. 13 have fared well with gold, 90 have got silver, and 75 has scored elite class. This course was passed by majority of people, 217, and only five people had an unsuccessful attempt. so from this course one we had we have received several feedback and those feedbacks were studied in detail and in we had planned for this course to be revised but luckily in 19th march 2019 the new drugs and clinical trial rules was released by government of india and that gave us a more impetus to have this new course which is the current regulatory requirements for conducting clinical trials in india for ind that is investigational new drug and new drug we also have another course which is launched along with this course and that is on medical devices that course is known as regulatory requirements for medical devices including ivd that is in vitro diagnostics in india that is also a version 2 because the earlier course was launched in early 2019 now this course when we when we designed this course we developed this course we had several discussions and this course was a is a lot of effort by many of the people it is primarily developed by cdsa clinical development services agency which is an extramural unit of translation health science and technology institute thsti which is an THSTI is an autonomous institute under Department of Biotechnology (DBT) and it comes under Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. This course content was primarily developed by CDSA and CDSU. So the CDSU plays a very very critical role and a very strong role in this course. So many of the course lectures were actually written by regulators. they have been reviewed by regulators and they have been recorded by regulators so we have majority of regulators taking up these lectures so as i mentioned the course is reviewed for its content and quality by the indian drug regulators cdsco central drugs standard control organization which is under ministry of health and family welfare government of india this course has several faculty several faculty have taken uh, lectures there are around 24 lectures it's a 8 week online course and uh, we have a disclaimer for uh, all the lectures because the information which is provided in this course and within this presentation is based on presenter's expertise and experience and represents the views of the presenter for the purpose of training so this course as i mentioned was uh, why it started or why we thought of about it we had actually contemplating about a revised version of the course and as as i said earlier fortunately uh, the new drugs and clinical trial rules was released on 19th march so as you know that as prescribed by the drugs and cosmetic act 1940 and also the new drugs and clinical trial rules 2019 and there and there it is a prerequisite for anyone who is involved in clinical trials new drug development uh, to know this uh, rules and regulations if they are planning to submit any document or seeking any regulatory approval in india so in past uh, in recent years there have been many changes a lot of amendments have come in the field of clinical trial as well as new drug approval and the regulations as you know are dynamic in nature they keep on changing so uh, we have tried to address uh, this to a great extent 
this course will keep revising as and when new information comes in and uh, your feedback as such is very important to make this more uh, more uh, content based course. So this course uh, we have tried the most important thing is that I have always faced people telling that regulations are difficult to understand, it's tricky, it's not easily, it is easy to misinterpret or have confusion related to that. So uh, we had uh, tried our level best to make the language as simple as possible and uh, make it as uh, with examples or cases wherever possible we have tried to do that. That's the reason we have always uh, always taken help of the current regulators as well as former regulators to take this lecture sessions and you will you can feel them that what is their perspective about that. So when you hear that or you from them you will have I think you will have a better clarity to this. So uh, now the question who should take this course who are the target participants according to us anybody can take this course but this course might be more beneficial to people who are working in this area especially say clinical trial new drug development maybe the person working in research and development maybe manufacture maybe import including investigators the clinicians the regulatory affairs personnel the people who are the ethics committee members human ethics committee members and many crc like clinical research coordinator um, cra clinical research associates any person who is working in this area can benefit from this course if you ask industry, um, I think pharma, pharmaceuticals, bio, biotechnology industry, the CRO industry, the contract research organization. Over the past few years, we are seeing that many of the academia has getting interested in taking up this uh, clinical trials and new drug approvals. And for them also, it's a unique way for them to know about this through this course, they can take this. So uh, the earlier course which was launched in early 2019 was a four week course with uh, 12 lectures. This time uh, the new drugs and clinical trials rules is quite a big, um, it's a big course and uh, even with 24 lectures we felt that um, we could have done more. So it's an eight week course so that means you will have eight assignments exam if you're uh, if you are willing to take an exam, I will suggest you should take this exam because um, it will help you and maybe the certificate might be beneficial to you for your future and it is a unique experience. And I have spoken to many people who have taken the exam last year and if you have seen that many people out of 222 people who took the exam last year, 217 have passed. So uh, for them I think so it is a great journey and if you are not willing to take an exam, this course is free of free for you. So. You can just enjoy the course. So what will you learn after eight weeks is that um, we have tried carefully to keep the lectures in a chronological order best in the interest of you. So you will learn about the um, new drugs and clinical trial rules in a better way. You will understand how the things are done when you manufacture it, when you import it. You will also know about various essential documents which are required by the regulators when you want to say take any um, approval for clinical trial from the CDSU or the, who, is, who are the Indian drug regulators. You can also uh, know how to conduct trials, especially new drugs, IND, investigation and new drugs. You also have a chance to undergo something like uh, the good clinical practice, very important lecture in this course. You also have a chance to understand the ethics guidelines, uh, ICMR has two ethics guidelines which are national ethical guidelines for biomedical research, uh, biomedical and health research for human participants in 2017. So uh, basically we will cover those. So out of the 24 lectures that you see here, we have as I mentioned that we have kept it quite chronological to see but there are good chances that some of the informations might be redundant in nature, repeated. So it is uh, purposefully being made redundant so that you remember things better and it is not uh, just because of out of sight. So we have carefully reviewed but if you feel that something is could have been addressed, something I missed out, please let us know. So we begin with the first week, uh, all the week have three lectures. So first week we have uh, the course one begins with the lecture one, L1 we call it. Uh, we take you through uh, the, the regulatory system, mainly how, how a regulatory system, how do regu Indian regulators work. 
So, it is an introduction to the Indian regulatory system. Then uh, many people have heard about drugs and cosmetic rules and act. So, we will first take you to drug and cosmetic act and then we will take you to the rules and they are under all the things which comes under DNC act and uh, rules. Then uh, we have an overview type of lecture which is uh, brief about the new drugs and clinical trials rules 2019, very very brief overview uh, so that you know what you are going to study in detail. Then second week start with uh, the preclinical data requirements, we talk about animal pharmacology, animal toxicology. The lecture 5 we talk about various rules, uh, there are several rules which govern clinical trials in India as well as globally. The lecture 6 uh, is divided into two parts, um, 6A, 6B we call it, phases of clinical trials, the, all the phases and um, what are the different regulatory requirements for each phase like phase 1, 2, 3. And also we talk about the data requirements which are necessary for clinical trials. Now week 4, week 3rd. So last year uh, course we did not address the bioavailability and bioprevalence area altogether. So this time we have two dedicated lectures for this, the people who are working in BAB area, I think so it is a good news for them because they got to hear from the regulators what are their, uh, their perspectives, regulators perspectives about BAB study and the study centers, so it will really benefit you and uh, lectures 8 which is about the BAB guidelines, which, uh, this is also going to be helpful for people who are working in the area of BAB, that is bioavailability and bioprevalence. Lecture 9 which is L9 talks about ethics committee registration, this ethics committee is about human ethics committee, also it talks about re-registration. This was apparently covered in last lecture, this time I think so we have done some improved um, details or data has been added. Lecture 10 is an interesting lecture, it is about ethical consideration. So here we discuss about the ICMR guidelines which I just now mentioned earlier, 2017 two guidelines were released. They are briefly uh, discussed here and I am sure all the ethics committee members will appreciate this lecture very much. Lecture 11 is about good clinical practice like I was mentioning you, these two are some added things which uh, are in L10 and L11 and this here we speak about the GCP guidelines by CDSU 2001, we also take you a little bit overview about the ICGCP. The lecture 12 which is the last lecture of fourth week is about the requirements of import, manufacture of new drug and IND which is investigational new drug. Now we have the four more week left remaining. So every week we have assignments, the assignments are based on the three lectures which were taught during those, uh, during that week. So week 5 we talk about some important issues which uh, we felt were missed last time. Lecture uh, 14 talks about, uh, we talk about, discuss about the special concern and uh, this was earlier there in um, the earlier course, we have tried and see that what can be best done. The lecture 15 we talk about the various guide, uh, guidelines which are related to clinical trial, like earlier lecture we have spoken about all the rules which are related to clinical trial, here we are talking about all the guidelines that are related to clinical trial. Now comes the week 6. Uh, we discuss about the protocol, so we discuss how, what should be the content of a proposed protocol which is very important when you conduct clinical trial and uh, then we talk about the next lecture is lecture 17, we talk about what are the content of the clinical trial report, that is also extremely important, the CSR, the clinical study report is the report which you submit to the regulator after the trial is over and it is very important to understand the regulator's perspective about what they expect from both protocol as well as report. I am sure this two lectures L16 and L17 is going to help many of the people who are working in this area. Lecture 18, post-marketing assessment, post-market assessment has been addressed um, in the new drugs and clinical trial rules quite uh, briefly and we will cover them. We also discuss about the clinical trial compensation in detail. Then we have the last two weeks remaining, week 7 and week 8. Week 7, we have a very interesting lecture which is L19. We talk about all the common observations during the submission of clinical trial protocol. This is pretty interesting one because it will help you to find out what regulators feel at their end when they, when you accept protocol and what are the things you should do and you should not do and this lecture is definitely going to help many human ethics committee members, investigators, pharma, biotech or even industry academia a lot. 
Similarly, sites for hospitals and um, various ECs, it is a very interesting one, the L20, the lecture 20 talks about the common observ observations uh, during the clinical trial or ethics committee site when there is an inspection, what the regulator uh, find out, what is the most common thing, what they see, whether it is protocol deviations or documentation, uh, lack unit there, you know, so we all are discussed there. Lecture 21 is about new drug development and discovery, we felt that this should this can be adequately addressed here. Lecture 22 is like we started with the lecture L3, we talk about the important points, here we speak about what is new. So, we cover what was not existing at all and what are the things which the new drugs and clinical trial rules have um, addressed. So, it is a very pretty interesting lecture, lecture L22 and uh, online submission, we have Sugam online submission and uh, which is 23A and we have another online submission which is CTRI, Clinical Trial Registry of India and that is very pretty interesting uh, lectures, you will surely enjoy this lectures. Lecture 24 is the last lecture of this entire course and it talks about all the tables you see in the new drugs and clinical trial rules, the contents are described in little detail so that you understand the tables better. This course uh, has many people, many faculty who have spoken like Professor Y.K. Gupta, he has spoken, he has taken lecture 22 and Dr. Nandini Kumar, uh, she has taken lecture 10 and 10. The entire CTRA team, Clinical Trial and Registry of India, the entire team, Dr. Vishnu Rao, uh, Dr. Mahua, Dr. Atul, Dr. Tulsi, they have taken the CTRA lecture. So, you hear from horse's mouth, um, all the CTRA people tell you how to work with the CTRA uh, submissions. So, as you know this course or any course in matter is a matter of team effort, it is not possible to do that alone and maybe a small team of ours. So, the CDAC training team only has three people including me, so it is very tough for us, it is only possible because few people have really worked hard along with us and made it possible. So, I think a, a big applause should go to Dr. T.K. Sable, Dr. Dhananjay Kumar Sable who is an assistant drugs controller at CDSU headquarter in New Delhi who had been working for past one year with us, the earlier course as well as this course to make it possible. It was really a lot of effort by him and I should never forget uh, Sri Arun B. Ramteki who is a former joint drugs controller of India, CDSU headquarter and he is the consultant regulatory affairs at CDSA and he has been the backbone behind both the courses. He had uh, started with the initial drafting of the lecture which is the which is a crucial or a cornerstone for this development. So, these two people have really contributed and I must not forget my team members, Ms. Vandana Chawla who is a training manager at CDSA and Jitinder Ahuja who is our training coordinator, they both have really, really put in lot of efforts to see what you see today. So, it is lot of effort by team. I also thank uh, Professor Usha Menon who is a mentor and strategy leader at CDSA because she has been constantly working with us. Um, and mentoring those what she feels from a perspective of a user or a participant and had been a strong support behind this. I also thank Dr. Nitya Vadva, Assistant Professor at THSTI and Faculty in Charge at CDSA. She had been also very supportive to make this possible, clear all the hurdles that we face um, because of them I think so it is possible. Uh, any or any such course requires a huge commitment from the management and uh, I am really thankful to Professor Gagandeep Khan who is the executive director of THSTI. Uh, she had been a very, very strong support and it was her vision to take this forward for this first course launch as well as the subsequent launch of version 2. So, they are, they are really have contributed in building up this course and we have many more thinking about many more such courses um, in the way forward. There are various contributors as I said, the Dr. Nandini Kumar who is a former DDG at senior grade at ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, who has taken this lecture L10 on ethical considerations, Professor Y.K. Gupta, he was, he is the ad, uh, advisor, project advisor at THSTI and CDSA and had been the former Dean of All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi and was heading the pharmacology department at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi for a long time. So, he has been a great support uh, towards this. 
And Dr. Vishnu Rao Dr. and the entire CTRI team as I mentioned they took lecture 23B which is which includes Dr. Mahua, Dr. Atul and Dr. Tulsi. So this course is on regulations and we are talking about current regulatory requirements. I doubt whether this course would have been successful without a current regulator. So I think so the current regulator's contribution to this course should be applauded. They are terribly busy. They have huge commitments and they have really, really no time. In spite of that, I think so everybody in spite of the hectic schedule, they had worked with me over a period of say one year to few months and recorded these lectures on Saturdays, Sundays, holidays just to make it possible. So I really salute to their commitment because they believed along with us that knowledge is for sharing and if they share their perspective as a regulator, I think so the nation will benefit from it. So I must thank the leader, Dr. V.G. Somani, who is the Drugs Controller General of India for allowing us, supporting us and strongly uh, promoting this online course so it reaches you. So thank you Dr. Somani, Dr. B K. Bangaru Rajan. I cannot forget the first support which I derived from him. So when we started this course way back in 2018, planning to roll it out in 2019, it was the first time and we had several, several hurdles. We didn't know how to do a course. We literally learned from scratches. And it was a strong support of Dr. K. Bangaru Rajan to hold our hand and make it possible. It was not possible without him. If he had backed out even for a single day, I think so we would have crumbled down. I also thank Dr. Ishwara S. Reddy, who, was, who is the Joint Drugs Controller presently and that time in the course one he was the DCGI at that time. But he has been a strong support in the earlier course as well as this. I thank them. Of course, I mentioned that this course has got a lot of contribution and efforts from Dr. Dhananjay Kumar Sable, who is the Assistant Drugs Controller at CDSEO headquarters and he has literally worked day and night, changed many slides and have taken a lot of pain and efforts along with his entire CDSU team at CDSU headquarters to uh, refine them and so that we can ensure that only correct information reaches you. I also thank Dr. Rubina Bose, who is the Deputy Drugs Controller, West Zone at Mumbai of CDSU. She's very, very busy person, but in spite of a busy, hectic schedule, she took her weekends off, holidays off to record for this course. I cannot thank her enough because when you have uh, very less time and you try to do it out of a lot of efforts personally, it really makes a lot of difference to the team spirit. I also thank all the CDSU team members who have contributed and I really feel proud that we are all able to make this together. For a greater public good. This course was first conceived and delivered during our first early session with NPTEL and IIT Madras. Since 2018 that we are working with Ms. Bharti from IIT Madras, the entire NPTEL team, they had been a very, very strong support, very prompt, very positive, very supportive. I have never heard them saying no for the last two years and unbelievably they are effective and prompt. So thank you Bharti. We have this time Mr. Mahesh who is helping us with all the recordings, editing, post editing. We have Lakshmi who is helping us with all our teaching assistants and ass assignments. I'm really thankful to them. Majority of the lectures were recorded at IIT Delhi and IIT Delhi's entire team is very supportive. We had huge issues of getting time of the regulators, working on a weekends. They have really spent uh, blood and sweat with us in getting time from people. So I thank Mr. Taneja and his IIT Delhi team, Mr. Sanjay, Mr. Mahinder. They have really contributed. So without that, it's not possible. This time we had IIT Mumbai also. So IIT Bombay, we had Ms. Bharti, Mr. Tushar and Mr. Amin. So they have also contributed in making this because we are not physically present but they have managed it wonderfully well. I personally feel that the quality of recording that they do and the support they provide is outstanding. I am also thankful to all the TAC which is Training Advisory Committee members of CDSA who have contributed to this. 
especially Professor Y.K. Gupta, but Professor Srinjini Bhatnagar, Professor Gagandeep Kang, Dr. Vishnu Rao, earlier we had Dr. Jain from ICMR, then we have Dr. Naru from uh, SAS, now we have Professor J.P. Mulyal, who is the former principal of CMC Vello. All the TAC members have been really, really supportive and have understood all the efforts and have reviewed and guided us from time to time. So any course is, is a matter of huge efforts from our end. Once the course is delivered, it's totally to you. So I personally feel that once you go through this course, please do not think any of the feedback as a small feedback or a big feedback or a bad feedback or a good feedback. Every feedback matters to us. Uh, we had, I think, so more than 400 feedbacks in the earlier course. We have read each and every feedback with utmost sincerity. And we have implement, implemented majority of them in version 2. So when you write to us, please be ensured that we will definitely go through your feedback and we will try our level best to address those. So that means your co this course matters a lot to us and your feedback matters a lot to us. So because this course is made for you and it can only be successful if it is useful to you. If it doesn't make any sense to you, all our efforts will be null and void. We have learned a lot while designing the first course. It was not a cup of tea. We are still learning. Even today, we feel that we could have done better. So in the version 3 or a new course which is launched by us, I am sure we will be able to do better. So please remember, please share your feedback with us. Your feedback is extremely important to us. We would like to know what we have missed, what we should have done better. Like, like I thought that we should do more examples, we should do more case studies, maybe some more videos maybe some areas are left, please write to us. When we hear same topic from many people, maybe it's a time for us to add on those topics. So that's it, all of you. I, on behalf of the entire team, welcome you on board to this course and wish you all a happy learning. Thank you, Namaskar and Jai Hind.